Hi. So, uh, today we're talking about books. Books, you say? Well, I do hope you'll be talking about Moby Dick. Oh. Um, you yeah, know, I'm gonna be talking about, like, photo books. Um, I guess I probably could have said that in the start of the video. Huh. Anyway, the reason why I think photo books are so important is because it gives you a fresh new outlook on photography. There are so many photographers out there, and there are so, so many books out there that will be completely contrasting to what you normally shoot, and it'll definitely make you realize how much you can do with photography, and honestly, how interesting you can make it if you're in a rut. It really just keeps me inspired to look at lots of different people's works, from like gritty black and white street photography, to then painterly like landscapes. There's so many different types, even wildlife photography. Having a photo book for each style of photography is a great idea because you can have them on your bookshelf and anytime you're feeling in a rut you can just pull them off and start to look through them and I can almost guarantee you'll find some new idea that'll spark in your mind that you can go out and shoot. The other thing is that nothing beats a physical copy of photographs. Whether it's prints that you've made yourself or whether it's just in a photo book, it's still much better than just seeing it on a screen or scrolling through Instagram. And the last thing, and probably the most important in my view, is the presentation of a photo book. It's meticulously thought out into how they want to have it designed, how they want to position the photo, and even how big or small they want to make the photo. It really shows you how the photographer wants you to see their work, and it also kind of shows how they see their own work and see which ones they actually value the most. When you see a giant double page spread, it's clear that that's one of their favorite photos and they want you to appreciate all the details and intricacy that it took to get the photo that they have. I just think photo books are a very good way to look at someone's work and although they are making a resurgence, I really feel like you as a viewer should at least be buying a few photo books of people who inspire you, whether it's people on YouTube or Instagram or whatever who you draw a lot of inspiration from, or if it is famous photographers that you just really like their work. I really think it's important for all photographers to be looking at work physically and not just on a screen all the time. Okay, now enough of me saying, oh, screens are bad, everything should be analog again. I really want to actually do tell you about some books. And the first book that I want to talk to you about is Joel Meyerowitz's Where I Find Myself. Now this book is a live retrospective of Joel Meyerowitz, so it shows some of his earlier works to his latest works, and I think this book was published early last year, so it is still fairly current to the kind of stuff that he has been doing in Tuscany, which is where he lives now. Now being a life retrospective, it covers a lot of different photo series, which is why, obviously, it's a pretty big book. If you're not one for big books, then there are other books of his that are smaller, but I would highly recommend getting this one because it's worth the wait. <laughs> If you don't know Joel Meyerowitz, he is an amazing street photographer, landscape photographer, and pretty much just photographer in general. And not only just his work is amazing, but as a person, he has done so much for the photography community. He's still making courses, giving out talks, and just constantly giving back as much as he can with all of the, his life experience, with over like 50 years of, as a working photographer. It's pretty insane that he's still giving out as much information as he is. Now if you want to hear him talk about photography, which I highly recommend you should, I'll link down one of his talks down below on YouTube and I can also link his Masters of Photography course if you're happy to pay a bit of money to get a more organized course made by Masters of Photography, then I would highly recommend that too because it is great. Now I do want to briefly touch on some of the photo series that he's made that are in this book and I'll show you some of the images. Obviously I'm not going to share too much of it because I really do think you should buy it yourself and I don't just want to give away the whole book, but I will show you some photos from it that uh, probably some of my favorites and definitely my favorite series that he's done. Now one of the best series in here which you probably heard of is Cape Light and that was a series of after he'd kind of decided he wanted a little bit of a break from shooting fast-paced street photography in New York he decided to buy an 8x10 camera and head down to Cape Cod in Provincetown in Cape Cod where it's a bit of a tucked away little town and generally seems a bit quiet most of the time 
Apparently a friend told him to go down there uh, to have a little getaway, so we brought his 8x10 camera and produced some of the most beautiful images that I think I've ever seen. Now this book also covers some of the portraits that he took on the 8x10 and also just his view on the process of shooting an 8x10 camera. Um, there are not many words in this book, so if you are I know a lot of artists don't really like reading, but it's definitely worth reading the stuff that's in here and there's not too many words, so you don't need to worry too much about that. And I only say that because I'm one of those artists who doesn't really like reading lots of words. I know I'm still a bit of a child, I'm trying to work on that, but it's still a factor and I feel like there's probably a fair few people who, who feel the same way. Another series in this that he covers is his Ground Zero work. So. There's a bit of a story behind it, and honestly I'd rather you hear it from him rather than me because he's gonna tell the story properly, I'm just gonna butcher it, but essentially he was the only person documenting Ground Zero as it was being cleared and rebuilt. So he spent, I think it was about six to eight months, um, pretty much solely at Ground Zero, and shot on 8x10, 6x7, 35mm, and was just constantly shooting thousands of images over the process, and he made it into a book which is a brilliant book, but also in this book here, he does cover a lot of that series, so if you are interested in, in that, then I would highly recommend either picking up this or picking up the book on Ground Zero. So the next book I wanna talk about is this book, of Renoir paintings. Now I think it's an excellent idea for you to explore other mediums to get inspiration from because as much as it makes sense to look at other photographers for inspiration and to see kind of what other people are getting up to, I also think it's important to not only look at other photographers, but also look at other artists in other mediums, whether it be music, movies, or specifically paintings. I think finding a painter who paints similar subject matter to what you like to shoot is something that is very underrated because it definitely gives you another perspective on how you can actually shoot things and how you can sort of play with light to, to get the most out of your subject matter. Because you can find someone who can paint the same subjects that you do, but have a lot more control, obviously, because they're creating what they have in their head and creating the best version that they thought that they could make on canvas. It just gives you another perspective on, on how you can shoot your subject. Now, for me, I used to shoot a lot of portraits and obviously I can't do much about it with the pandemic happening at the moment. Hopefully I can get back to that. But anyway, for me, Renoir is someone who is just phenomenal in terms of portraiture and when I was doing my portraits obviously I liked a lot of vivid colors and that's definitely something that is not absent in Renoir's work. I also think that the texture that you get from looking at paintings is really interesting and obviously shooting film I'm one of those people that just loves to have texture in an image and I think it's just another aspect that you can sort of add to your to your photos. If you can sort of add that that bit of texture or at least just the way that light will fall on certain fabrics can add texture to a photo. And lastly, one of my favorites on my shelf, Ansel Adams 400 Photographs. Now this is another life retrospective book and if you don't know Ansel Adams then he is a American landscape photographer his career probably spanned from mid-twenties to late-sixties. And I personally have a very deep connection to Ansel Adams because he was the first photographer that I ever properly looked at. The story behind that briefly is when I did my first ever photography class in high school, um, we got told that we needed to do basically just look up some famous photographers. So I went onto Google and typed famous photographer and Ansel Adams was I think like the third person that came up and I was like this guy's work's amazing I've never actually really looked at black and white photography in an artistic kind of way I've just sort of seen it as like old photography so it really opened my eyes to to what photography can be and for that it's something that I've always always loved about Ansel Adams
And honestly, his work speaks for itself. Um, it's very grand. He always likes to make the land parts of his landscapes very small and make it as if you can really tell how spectacular and how grand he wanted to make all of these landscapes. By dropping the horizon line and making everything look quite small and having a big open space in the sky, it really does open up the photograph and it's something that wasn't really being done at the time and so it's something that I've always loved, loved doing with my landscape photography, even though I don't do a whole lot of it, it's always something that I keep in mind. Um, and it's, it's something that I just really appreciate about his work because, again, no one else really made me appreciate landscape photography like this, um, especially in black and white. Because the colour is very important to my work and so I figure if I'm shooting landscapes, I want to shoot it in colour because that's part of the landscape. But there is also something to shooting in black and white, obviously that's all he had at the time, but I've been wanting to experiment with black and white a lot more and I think I definitely want to shoot more landscapes in black and white, so if you are interested in black and white landscapes, black and white or landscapes, then I would highly recommend getting this book. So I know this is very different to what I would normally make and it's because I want to have a few different avenues on my channel that's not just gear and what certain film stocks look like. And I heavily believe in photo books because not only is it a great way to consume people's work, but it's also a great goal to work towards and I think the more of you guys that start buying photo books and can, we can start to grow photo books as an industry again, it means that a lot of us can start to make our own books and self-publishing is a lot easier than it was back in the day. And I think it would be a great thing for you to not only explore photo books as a medium, but also start to make your own photo books because there are a lot of places like Blurb or Vistaprint or pretty cheap places to get books published and you can just start to make them yourself because I've been doing that a lot recently and it's something that's very rewarding just to make them for yourself and I've also kind of been having it as practice because I want to, if I ever get the chance to have a book published, I want to have a heavy hand in the design of it because I want to make sure that it's being portrayed in the way that I want. But if I don't know how photo books are designed and if I don't really study into it, then it's probably not going to look as good as it would if I had looked at another photo books. And it's also a win-win because you get to support the artists that you love and you also have a physical copy of their work now in a way that they wanted you to see it. And photo books will generally last a lifetime if you take care of them, so it's also pretty decent investment. So thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this new style of video, um, I'll probably end up making more of them as I start to get more books and can start maybe a little MIGS book club kind of thing on the channel. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed, and if you want to see more of my work, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, which is at MIGMedia, and hope to see you again soon.